Father, we thank you for this day of worship. We bless your name and glorify you, Lord, because you have called us together so as to make this the very gateway to heaven. I will pray, Lord, that all it needs and all it deserves, Lord, we pray you'll do in every child of God here and prepare us for glory for heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray, Lord, that the grace to carry through and the grace to live through according to your word you grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless us, Lord, and lead us on that we may not fall by the wayside. I will go through to the very end in Jesus' name. Speak your word to every heart today. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We're looking at John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. John chapter 13, verse 34. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Here we come to an important statement by the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord has been raising up not just converts, but disciples. And He wanted to prepare those disciples and mature them. Prepare them for heaven. And he said, there is one mark, one evidence, unquestionable, indisputable mark that you belong to me. And he said, the test is here. In verse 35, by this and this alone shall all men know that she are my disciples. If ye have love one toward another. As we look at the church, may the church at large, and the church from generation to generation, many things change really from country to country. The style of building that you'll find that changes from country to country. The style of worship that changes from country to country and from place to place and the style of worship that changes from place to place and the style of appearance even the style of sitting the youth on that side and the adults on that side and the workers are on another side that changes from place to place but then there is one thing that changes not whether it's first century or 21st century whether it is among the young or among the old, whether it is among the evangelicals or the Pentecostals, whether it is among one country or the other, there is one thing that changes not, and that is love. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, I'll be watching, I'll be looking at you, and I'll be selecting out my own disciples. And by just one thing, what well, I know that you belong to me by this one evidence, by this one mark, one indispensable mark, indisputable mark, unquestionable, something you cannot doubt, the indisputable mark of love. By this, just this, shall all men know that she are my disciples, if ye have loved one toward another. I'm talking to you today on the indisputable mark of true discipleship. Indisputable mark of true discipleship. We're looking at those verses again. A new commandment I give unto you. New creatures shall have new commandments. The new man shall have a new manner, new lifestyle. And Jesus Christ said, I've saved you. I've changed you. I've transformed you. I've called you to myself. And this new commandment I now give unto you, that she love one another. The Lord was telling them and reminding them, many things will happen that will try to erase that mark. 
that evidence in the midst of the people of God. But he says, always remember, if you allow any condition, any conflict, any situation, any circumstance to erase this evidence, there's no other evidence by which people will know that you belong to me. In your commandment, I give unto you that she love one another as I have loved you. He even measures that love. And he tells us the kind of love it will be. And it's the kind of love we're told in verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should be that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own that were in the world. He loved them until when? Until the age. The kind of love that doesn't change what the climate. The kind of love that doesn't change from city to city. The kind of love that doesn't change from one century to the other. The kind of love that doesn't change of the mood. I feel good, therefore I love. I feel terrible, therefore I don't love. That kind of love changes of the mood. But Jesus Christ, having loved his own, he loved them until the very end. And now he says, as I have loved you, that she also loved one another. In verse 35, by this shall all men know that she are my disciples, if ye have love to one to another. I'm talking on the indispensable mark of true discipleship. The indisputable, rather, indisputable mark of true discipleship. If you're going to be known as a disciple of Christ, as a child of God, this is the mark that nobody can dispute with, that nobody can contradict the indisputable mark of true discipleship. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, experiencing his love in our hearts. That's why it starts. You can't give out what you don't have. You cannot express what you have not experienced. You cannot share what you do not receive. You must, first of all, experience experiencing his love in our hearts number two expressing his love from the heart if you have it you show it if you possess it you share it and if you have it people will know you experience it you're going to express it expressing his love from the heart actually what you have what you express is all you are if you express hatred, that's what you have on the inside. If you express love, that's what you have on the inside. If you express bitterness, that's what you have on the inside. Out of the abundance of the heart, of the heart, tell me the rest. The mouth speaketh. You can only express what you have experienced. Number two, expressing is love. From the heart. Number three, exemplifying his love, exemplifying his love towards him. Exemplifying his love towards him. Number one, experiencing his love in our heart. Before we can share the love, before we can proclaim the love, before we can express the love. We must have it, experience it in our heart. How does that happen? We're looking at John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Lord is not expecting us to come and just manifest love unto him or to his creatures until we first come and we taste of his love. His love gave his only begotten son. His love sacrificed his only begotten son. 
His love made His only begotten Son to be our substitute and to be our Savior, to shed His blood, to take away our sins. We have all seen, that's what the Bible says, all have seen and come short of the glory of God. But then the punishment was shown upon. Jesus Christ came and he bore that punishment. And when you believe that, when you believe and accept that love of Christ and that love of God for you, you experience his love in your heart. By looking at Romans chapter 5. In Romans chapter 5, reading from verse 6, verse 7, and verse 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. You see that the Lord did not wait till we became better before he died for us. While we were still ungodly, unrighteous, and sinful. He manifested his love and he died for us. By the way, you remember when we come to that, you remember that he said, You should love one another as I have loved you. I didn't wait until you became better before I loved you. I didn't wait before because uh, before you received my love. I didn't wait that you'll become a higher person, holier person, a good person, a righteous person, a just person. I just loved you in your sin. Why you were sinning your sin? And he says, Exactly in that way do we show love unto other people, not waiting until no when they do good to me, when they are better to me, and when they are righteous, and when they turn, and when they do this or that, then I'll manifest my love to them. No, do it like Christ. And you manifest the love as Christ Himself has loved us. It says in verse 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet what? Sinners. Christ died for us. If there's anything that is breaking our home, it's that we're waiting too long. I don't like what that woman has done. And when she changes, then I will love her. I'm going to break the family. I don't like the way my husband is acting. And when she, he changes and he loves me, I'm going to show and respond my love unto him. Don't wait. Do it like Christ. We were sinners. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I pray that we'll experience all experience that love in Jesus' name. He loved us, he died for us. He loved us and took our sins away. He loved us and blotted everything. All the dry chain of commandments against us, he blotted everything away. So now we can experience his love. In Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 4. But God who is rich in mercy, God who is rich, rich in what? In mercy, some people are poor in mercy. They only have their mercy is scanty. I should not go around. But in the case of the Almighty God, He is rich and abundant in mercy, and the Lord wants us to be like Him. And He has shown His love and His compassion and His mercy unto all sinners, and is calling everyone, but. God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sin that's when, that's when he manifested the love and he says you can come and experience the love of Christ and then it says he has quickened us together with Christ by grace are you what? sage not by marriage because of his mercy, because of his compassion, because of his love. He says, by that grace are you saved. In verse 8, for by grace are you saved. Through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. He knew that if we waited, if he waited for us to have the faith ourselves, before we could be saved, we'll never get saved. So, He loves us and He reaches out towards us and He gives us the faith. The faith. 
that gets all saved. And he says, that faith is the gift of God. Then in verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. He recreates us, he remodels us, he, he makes us new creatures, and then he gives us the strength and the power to live in newness of life. All because of his love, all because of his compassion, all because of his mercy. In Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 31. Looking at verse 3. The Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. You see what God has done? Because of his love, he draws the sinner. He calls the sinner. He pulls the sinner away from destruction. And he draws us unto himself. And it is that love that attracts us, that draws us, that beckons upon us. And he says, why will you die? Why will you suffer? Why will you be far away from me for all eternity? And he drew us in his love. And he's saying, it is when we experience that love. You'll be so grateful in your heart that God himself has called you. And he has manifested his love in you. And you'll want to manifest that love towards all the people as well. In Galatians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 22. Galatians chapter 5, and we're looking at verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. He calls us by his spirit, gets us converted, gets us changed, gets us to be turned around, and then he puts the spirit within us. And it is the spirit of God that now begins to produce the fruit of his presence in our lives. And it says over here, the fruit the spirit produces, that is love. And joy and peace and long suffering, gentleness, goodness and faith, meekness, temperance against such, there is no law. But looking at Romans chapter 1, in Romans chapter 1, chapter 5, rather, Romans chapter 5, when God draws us by His love, we experience that love. That love is present and prevalent in our lives. And it is that that the Holy Spirit sheds abroad. And we're able to manifest love, not hatred. Love, not bitterness. Love, not selfishness. Love, by the presence of the Spirit of God that abides within us. In Romans chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 1. Romans 5, 1. Therefore, be justified by faith. To be justified means God looks us at us as if we had never sinned. He forgave us. He took away our sins. He pardoned us. He blotted out all the unrighteousness against us. He said, yes, I know you are guilty. I know you feel condemned. I know that you cannot save yourself. I don't know the guilt will weigh you down until it drives you, until you drop into a lost eternity. But my love brings salvation, transformation, forgiveness unto you. And so we're justified. And it is all by faith, not by the works that we have done. It says we're peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Go down to verse 5. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which He has given, which is given unto us. He gives us that Holy Ghost to bear witness in our hearts. Our sins are removed. Our sins are pardoned. Our sins are taken away. Our sins are all blotted out. And then we have the joy of the Spirit. 
the joy of salvation. We have the peace of God in our hearts. And we have the joy of salvation bubbly with this same praise the Lord. Our sins are taken away. Praise the Lord. We become new creatures in Christ. Praise the Lord. Things are different now. Praise the Lord. There is no condemnation now because He has taken the sins away. And He sheds His love abroad in our hearts by that Holy Ghost. That's why the Apostle John was rejoicing in that love. And then he, he proclaims and exclaims and says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. Read it for yourself in First John. First John chapter 3. In First John chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. What did John mean by that? It's a